Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Uh, I don't know about you, but I had a hard week, long week. Um, Wednesday night, uh, Diana texted me and she said, I think you probably should stay. I was down in Lincolnshire, Illinois, which is about 99 miles from our house. And she's like, it's starting to sleet here. So as Mike said, like with Brother Kim, I prayed protection of my car, but I actually stepped it up a little because um, I just felt in the spirit I needed to do that. So I'm like, Lord, please just make a path for me to get home. Right after I did that, the sleet turned into an ice storm. Um, I got close to Lake Geneva, and I was about ready to quit. And uh, I just kept saying, Lord, just keep, give me a path, give me a path. So about three miles out, I'm like, okay, I'm going to call Diana. I, I, it's not safe. I'm scared. And a snowplow pulled right in front of me. <laughs> and I led 20 vehicles into Lake Geneva. And so it took me right to the on-ramp. And I got to the on-ramp, and I'm like, okay, Lord, I really want to go home, but this is going to tell me whether I can get home because from 12 to 43, it's like this. And the ice was probably at that point a quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch thick on my car. You could see it on my wiper blades, and they were, like, cracking, and it was really freaking me out. But I'm like, Lord, please make a path for me. As I pulled on to 12... A snowplow pulled onto 12, took me all the way to the 43 exit, and I was able to get home. Yeah, praise God, praise God. And um, it took three hours. My wife was a little upset with me when I got home. She's like, I'm glad you made it home. Bam. But uh, um, so I kind of, what I want to talk about today is uh, speaking victory into our lives. Um, I gave Jeff a title. I didn't know what it was because I didn't write this till yesterday. Um, and I just kind of let the word go through. So uh, we're going to start with Genesis 1, and I'm going to try and look at the screen this time and slow my speech down. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Um, as we know, Genesis goes on. I'm not going to read it all. Uh, on the third day, uh, land, sea, and plant life. The fourth day, stars, heavens. Uh, fifth day, life in the waters and the birds. In the sixth day, all living creatures, including man, made in his image. Not to speed that up, but um, what I want to point out is God created all this just by speaking it into existence. Yes. God spoke it, and it was. We are made into the image of God, so we need to do the same. God could have, you know, I, when, when you look at the Bible, I think it's important when you read it, there's words in there that could have been way different. The Bible could have said, on the first day God did this, and on the second day God did that, and on the third day he did this, and on the fourth day he did that. It doesn't go that way. It said, God said, let there be light. And if we are made in his image, we need to do what he does. Uh, and to this day, and to those that will come after us, we will all live on the word of God. In Matthew 4 and 4 it says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The words we speak, the words we write, the words we think can have an impact on the present and the future of our lives. Amen. <laughs> Proverbs 18.21 says, death 
and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I'm reminded of a pastor, Evelyn Gibson, um, giving a, a good example of this. Um, she teaches a lot on healing, and uh, every time around the cold and flu season comes, she's like, how do you do it? What way, how do you handle the cold and flu season? At the first fi- sign of the flu, do you say, come on in, honey. Let me get you a nice warm robe. Let me get my slippers on. Let me get you a bowl of soup. Let's get a blankie. Let's get Netflix. And I'm just going to receive you. And, and we're just going to have this flu time together. Or do you stand and say, this body houses the spirit of Christ Jesus. You have no authority to come in here. You cannot live on me. I call you out in Jesus' name. I call my body healed and whole. This is the holy temple of the holy God. Now, you still might get the cold. It doesn't always work. It hasn't always worked for me. Um, But the symptoms might go faster, right? Um, And I'll admit it, a while ago, that was me. In the first one, I got the robe and the pajama pants, and I'm like, I'm going to be sick, and... You know, maybe my wife will take care of me and whatever. But now, as I, as I grow in the word and, and in my understanding, I try to exercise my faith by speaking victory into my own life. However, we also have the power to hurt people and ourselves with words. We can get pretty good at beating ourselves up and other people as well. Colossians 4 and 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. If our words and prayers are weapons against the enemy, what are they when we use them on each other? I want to say it one more time. If our words and prayers are weapons against the enemy, what are they when we use them against each other and on each other? The enemy will try to speak words into our life as well. It even happened to Jesus. If we go back again to Matthew 4, then Jesus was led up the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. In the message version, verse 4 says, It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. And again, if our words and weapons and prayers against the enemy, what are they when we use them on each other? Be thoughtful and full of grace when speaking to them. This is what we should try to do, to be a steady stream of encouraging words to our brothers and sisters. <clears throat> when Diane and I uh, first got married, the con- I was trying to find a job, I was applying for jobs, and um, I wasn't getting any. And uh, I think the conversation went something like this. Um, well, I applied for work today, and I think her response was, yeah, that's great. We need money. So <laughs> I, I had to get out of the box. So I, I decided to become an IT contractor. Um, I get my jobs from um, various marketplaces. And in the beginning, it was kind of slow. Um, you have to build a reputation, I think, a little bit. And uh, every day was kind of a challenge. and. Uh, <laughs> Every morning, it seemed for months, we had money, you get paid online and the money went in this bank because we had a bank account over here for checking and she would run to this bank to get to this bank before the checks would bounce. But she didn't make it a lot. And it was a very stressful time for us. And uh, we kind of got into that point where a little more money came in but it was still running back and forth and we just kind of just accepted it. But then we started to change things. We started to say that we were blessed, that we were highly favored, that we were victorious, that God was our provider, 
that he would get us through this. As we grew in our faith and we understood who we were to God, the work became more consistent and plentiful. Not so many banks bounce checks, not so many banks stressing us out. And who else is self-employed here? Anybody else self-employed? Is it stressful? It is. It is stressful. Yeah, let me get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is still stressful. Um, it's gotten way better. Um, but because we spoke that and we gave God some time, uh, things changed. And as a matter of fact, Diana did taxes last week, and she said we lost a tax deduction. We didn't have any bounce checks last year. Praise God. So it took a while. It took a while, and hopefully we'll be able to say the same thing next year, but um, it took a while. There is so much power in our words and how we use them, for good and bad. There are people in this world that are struggling. Providing a kind word in a time of struggle can be very powerful and encouraging. Just as God spoke light into the world, we can speak life into those around us. And when we do, that is the opportunity we can have to share the gospel of Jesus with them if they are not Christians. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of dry bones. This prophecy was for a whole nation as Israel as well as Ezekiel uh, were in captivity and had been for some time. Um, we're going to read a little bit of Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. It's kind of a cop out, but that's another story. <laughs> Again he said to me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, and was, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. I think that's the last of that. Um, I was reading some commentaries on this chapter, and I came across Spurgeon's verse expositions. Um, Charles Spurgeon's kind of an interesting fellow. He says, there was to be a house of Israel after all. The nation seemed to be dead and buried, but God would revive and restore it. This is a promise which may apply to a church when she gets into a very low spiritual state, and it looks as if she could never do any more good. Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. And to you, dear friends, who are the very heavy of heart, full of despair, and who seem as if you were as good as dead and buried, God speaks this in promise. Therefore, believe his word as though it had been directed to you personally. 
Behold, O oh my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. I don't know about you, but God has re resurrected me from some things. He brought me back from addiction. He rose me up from depression. He's given me new life. He's comforted and consoled me in my darkest days. Some of the things that we go through make us feel dead inside, as if we were not alive. But his promise is that he will bring us out of those situations. John eleven twenty five through 26 in the Amplified says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in, relies on me as Savior, will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me as Savior will never die. Do you believe this? I want to get back to the bones here just for a second. Derek Smith is an English pastor. Um, I think he's at Church of Bolton, I believe. In one of his sermons, he talks about the valley that Ezekiel was in. And we all can be in that same valley in a point in our life. A valley of dead bones. But we don't need to stay there. We can prophesy, pray, and declare our way through it. And I do want to clarify something on pro when I say prophesy and declare. I'm not saying prophesy the office of the prophet. I'm saying declare things. He says it like this. The valley is not our home. The real question we need to ask ourselves is the message of when we're in the valley. Can the dryness that you face change? Can you live? Can your children thrive? Can your finances live? Can your disappointments change? God says, prophesy to the bones. Prophesy is speaking truth in any given context. We are not called to see things as they are. Life is not the way we say it is. We see it is. We are called to see things that are not as if they are. If we keep saying what we see with our eyes, nothing will ever change. The currency of heaven is faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. God doesn't respond to need. He responds to faith. Walk back and forth through your experiences and prophesy to the dead bones in your life. We need to stop waiting for God to do something. God did what he needed to do. Now it's our turn. God is waiting for us. Use the word and speak it. Speak what you want to see. Make the invisible become visible in your life today. If we intentionally speak victory into our situations, they can change. Just the other day, our daughter, Jana, was told that her taxes would take two to three weeks. Jana's going on a vacation to Mexico. And the thing that really shocked me was Jana wanted to make sure her bills were paid before she left. She's, she's become such a responsible young lady. I'm so proud of her. She works, and, and Jana works very, very hard. She really does. And uh, she was with Diana, and Diana just said a quick prayer. Dear Lord, help her get her tax return. Five minutes later, Jana was jumping for joy. She got her tax return. It <laughs> Literally jumping up and down for joy. It, it, it wasn't a five-minute prayer of carefully chosen words and declarations. It was a prayer of a mother for her daughter out of love. So praise God. But it doesn't, all, yeah, amen. But it doesn't always work that way, right? <laughs> One of the phrases I use is, give God a minute. The reason I use this is to remind me that I am not God, and he is. That my timing is not perfect, his is. That what I am giving to God is God's. And when I give it and give it to him, it is his will and not my will that be done. God's timing doesn't run on a clock. We just have to trust him in his timing. I don't know why every prayer is answered, why every person is not healed, why someone has financial problems, but God's not a genie in a bottle. All I know is that we get the victory in heaven, but while we are here, we have the ability to bring about change to ourselves and others with prayer, words, and declarations. Jeremiah 23, 28 through 29 says, The prophet that hath a dream, tell him, tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? 
I know there's some people here today struggling with some things. Maybe you're in a valley of dry bones yourself. I know for me right now, the health of my wife is on my heart. To see her struggle the way she does. Praying for healing and not seeing a manifestation of that yet. Not knowing. It seems we've been in this valley for a while. Maybe your valley's financial stress or you've got some problems in your family. Maybe you're having problems at work. Maybe like we learned this morning, you've got some mental health issues. Maybe there's some depression going on. James 5, 14 and 15 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. I looked up the Greek word for sick. It is pronounced, at least according to me, asthenaeo. It means to be weak. It means to be feeble or to be without strength or maybe feeling powerless. It means to be weak in means, needy or poor, or to be feeble and sick. So perhaps today you're sick. Perhaps today you do feel weak. Maybe life has been beating you up and there's some dryness in your bones. Maybe you feel powerless in some situation in your life. Maybe you do feel depressed, exhausted, and feeling helpless. And yes, as we discussed this morning, if you need medication, take it. I have a video that I'm going to play before the worship crew comes up here today. I'd like to invite you to come to the altar and be anointed with oil and prayed for. I would challenge you to declare some victory and pray for one another. I would challenge you to bring into the light that which is holding you back. Wives praying for their husbands and vice versa. Friends praying for and with each other. Parents declaring victory for their children. Can we just take a moment today and hold each other up that we can be stronger together tomorrow? So we can start that video and if, if you if you just want to sit in your chair, I, there's no judgment there, but the altar's open. Diana?